I make a ton of decisions every single day here at Import Apart, and one thing that's hard to choose is what engine I'd like to tear apart every single week. I've got too many engines here to make that an easy decision. If I only had a couple, it would be pretty simple. So I like to alternate between brands and size of engines, maybe types of failures, whether it's easy or complicated. And last week we did a very simple 4.3 liter GM V6. So I figured I'll go to the other end of the spectrum and we'll do another Mercedes V8. We did one two weeks ago, a bi-turbo M278. So today we're gonna to take apart an M156. This is the 6.2 liter AMG 63 engine. Comes in S63s, ML63s, E63s, everything 63 in the mid and late 2000s. And this is another core engine that seems to be in much nicer shape than the last one of these. In fact, I tore one of these down, I think about six months ago, maybe longer, and it was pretty wrecked. It was very wrecked. This one looks to be pretty nice, so I'm hoping I get a ton of good parts from it. One of the first things I noticed when I found this engine is that it has water in the plug wells because it sat outside at least for a short period of time and got rained on. Some of the places I buy engines from, they don't have the room to store their cores inside. I bought it anyway, and I was gonna flip it over to get all the water out of the plug holes, and then I thought, hmm, maybe I should check the oil, and it turns out, it's completely full, drained. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. I suppose we should drain the oil first. Oh, that's not just oil. Okay, now it's just oil. So it clearly had some water in it. Not really surprised. I am so happy that I didn't just flip this engine over. While this thing is draining, I wanted to point out a few other things, mainly the fact that it has heat tabs stuck on the head and the block, which tells me that this engine was likely a return. This was an engine that was sold, installed into a vehicle, and returned for some reason. They were not melted, so that's a good sign. If they were melted, I'd be a little more concerned. Something else worth mentioning is that it is missing the VVT actuator plate with the solenoids in it. That's kind of an expensive part. I did sell them out of the last engine, but it could be a clue as to what is wrong with this engine. Why would that be off? I think we'll find out. Another thing that tells me that this engine was installed and it wasn't straight out of a car is the fact that there's nothing cut on the front of it. Nothing's broken. It's just like everything was disconnected like you would if you were going to replace an engine. Now that this thing is drained, I think we can turn this on its side and drain the plug wells. Oh boy, this thing is heavy. Well, that was not ideal. Now we can pull the plugs. All right, so they're not very tight. This is why I like using a ratchet to crack these loose, because it lets me feel if there's something wrong right away. The plugs all look pretty good. Uh, nothing's been mechanically regapped. No signs of malice in the combustion palace. Nothing yet. No clues yet. The next thing we're going to do is remove the oil filter. And I'm going to use this giant one and a quarter wrench just because it was the first thing I grabbed out of the box. Oh man. Look at that. This filter is filled with metal. Well, that's not good. Cutting it was unsuccessful. I could probably cut it better, but why? I can already see how much, ooh, there's some copper in there. Boy, that could only come from one place. Some large hunks of it. Well, the filter did its job. Somebody else didn't. Now we're gonna prep this thing to pull the wire harness off of it. We're gonna get the intake tube off and then we'll pull the intake manifold. Ooh. 
Yuck. At this point, I'm just trying to get the harness out of the way enough so I can pull the intake. At this point, I've uncovered most of the bolts for the intake manifold, so we're going to get those knocked loose. I'm going to do this carefully. I do not want to strip these. Anything can be a hammer. This should just come right off. Like I was saying, this should just, you know, come right off. Oh, it's running into some parts here. You know, I thought I was going to get lucky here. As it turns out. I didn't get everything disconnected. Okay, now it should come right off. Yeah, that came off. The intake ports all look okay. There's some standing oil, but that could be how this engine was stored. I mean, this thing was completely full of oil. I don't see any metal debris or bent valves. Just standing oil. Next, we'll pull the passenger side or right side valve cover off. If you remember the last M156 I did, it had a soft cam, a damaged bucket, and someone ignored that sound for a long time until the engine literally exploded. I don't see any signs of that on this side of the engine. The cams look okay. I don't really see any issues. It's pretty clean on this side, but there's still a whole other half of an engine. Now, obviously we haven't pulled the cam caps yet, but the cam lobes look pretty good. I don't see any obvious signs of issues. I don't see any signs of metal in the head. Like it's settled in the oil deposits. So far, so good. One thing we haven't done yet is turn this engine over, but I wanted to pull the intake manifold and the valve covers off to see if there's any obvious failure because I don't want to cause any more damage. But I didn't see any, so now we can turn this thing over. Maybe. Ha, 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 oh, oh, that feels bad. This also allows me to get a better view of the cams and, wow, that is not okay. Now we're going to start on the front of the engine and start getting some of this stuff off. We'll get the oil filter housing off, some of these pulleys, the water pump. Just kind of make it a little cleaner so that we can start on the cylinder heads after that. had to pull hard. Now we'll remove the variable valve timing sensor and solenoid plate. Oh, that oil does not look good. It's got some sparkles in it. It's not a good place for sparkles.
That was way too easy. Even the water pump says AMG on it. Oh, we're leaking. One more T30. Well, that's not shaped like a fluid passage. I mean, maybe European kind. All right, I'm not gonna say anything else. First, we're gonna get the phasers or cam gears out. Now we'll start with the left or driver's side cylinder head. This actually looks really good in here. There's no bucket wear, which these engines are known for. The journals for the cam are in really good shape. I don't see any scoring. Obviously, someone put some fresh oil in it and ran it for at least some period of time. The oil looks really good. No sparkles at the top of the cylinder head. Boy, these cams hold a lot of oil, but they're in really good shape. I don't see any cam lobe wear. Maybe a hint. It's really, these are in really good shape actually. Which is good because these are worth quite a bit of money. The cam caps look really nice too. I don't think any metal ran through this, at least not for any duration of time. Now the right or passenger cylinder head. All right, let's zippy doo dah these out. Now I have access to all the head bolts. Same story on this cylinder head. No bucket wear, these all rotate pretty well. I think that's what happens to the uh, some of these engines is that the buckets stop rotating and then the cam wears through the bucket. That's what happened to the last one I tore down. If you haven't seen that, watch that video. Everything looks good, all the journals are nice. Let's look at the cams. The cams look really nice as well. I didn't see any signs that they wouldn't. The buckets look nice and the journals look nice. Usually the cams look good too. The next step is to take the timing chain tensioner out. The next step is to pull these pins out. These are internally threaded uh, and they're actually pins that hold the timing chain guide. So we're going to get these two out and then there's two more on the other cylinder head. And to get these out, use a slide hammer, use one of the pieces of hardware, the bolts that came with this engine, just like so. We thread this onto here. And then you just and the pin comes out. Now this pin is a little bit different. It's a little bit larger and the bolt I need does not fit through the end of my slide hammer. So I'm going to kind of rig up a puller and we're going to try to back this off the head this way. We'll probably have to readjust this a few times. 
See, look, it pulled it out a little bit. So now we just need more space. It's a little bit further. And the pin is out. Now there's a lot of play here, which is what we want. I do not have the special tool for removing the pin that holds these gears in, but we're going to try to get them out without cutting the chain. So the first thing we're going to do is unbolt the Allen that's inside here. I think it's an Allen. Might be a Torx. One of the two will work. So now we're going to remove the bolt that holds this pin in. And we're going to use a T30, although I think, I think it's a five millimeter hex, but we're just going to use a T30. Don't look. Just don't look there. See, it came out. It's fine. Almost out. Whatever, it's loose. Oh, it's definitely an Allen. Eh, T30 works fine. I take a pair of needle nose and I stick one part of the needle nose pliers in the pin and the other set sits on the threads carefully. And then I can use that to rotate this. It kind of like breaks the seal free. And I have an idea to remove this without the special tool. The last engine, I didn't think about this and I ended up cutting the chain, but we're not gonna do that this time. So I've got an attachment for my slide hammer. I'm gonna stick it in the hole here. I'm gonna use the weight of the hammer. This doesn't thread in here, even though it is a threaded piece. It's a little bit of friction here. We're gonna use a slide hammer to see if we can pull this out. Well, it moved out a little bit. All right, we got that pretty far out. I am very surprised that worked. Thought for sure that was not gonna work. Look at that. Success. Now we should be able to, oh no, don't drop. Should be able to maybe, I don't know how this is gonna go around this. Let's get the other side out first. Okay, pulled it out a little bit. Boy, that was way too easy. I feel like I cheated. Now I need to somehow get this gear out, which I'm not quite sure how. Oh, look at that. Boy, this is, this is working out real well. Too well. Something's gonna go wrong. Ah, oh, that was too easy. Before we go to get the head bolts out, we need to take this out of the way. Let's get that done. Before we get the head bolts that surround the combustion chamber, we're gonna get some of these other head bolts out. There's just, uh, looks like four T45s. Now the head bolts are T55s. I don't really remember how tight these are, but man, I hope these aren't as tight as the last Mercedes engine I did. Nowhere near. Still tight, but not like they were on that other engine. Looks like this is going to come out with the head bolts. So yeah, this will be fine. I'm sure this will just lift right off. No issues whatsoever. I didn't miss anything that I know of. Perfect. Yeah, it's right off. Blue to the rescue. I did get all the bolts, right? That did not feel good. I don't know what I hit with my hand, but man, right in the, all right. This side is, is there something to pry on on this side? Of course there is. It's just tough sitting on those dowels. 
It's loose, but it is not coming off. I think it's a stupid head gasket. Stupid head gasket. Stop being so sticky. Oh, we're making more progress. The fact that these head bolts won't come out is the problem. Oh, let go. Wow. That is not what I wanted. That was a struggle. I already see some problems here. That rod's adjustable. These engines aren't supposed to have adjustable rods. I think someone deleted the bearing on the cylinder. And if you look closely at the top of the piston, right at the crown, you can see the top of the piston has hit the combustion chamber that hit the cylinder head. The rest of this looks pretty nice. This cylinder has some, uh, some pretty deep scratches in it. That is not what I wanted to see. Let's see if we can push some of these head bolts up. I don't really know why. Maybe they're stuck in the head gasket. I don't want to slice or dice myself here. Some of those don't want to... Okay, we just have uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five unreasonable head bolts. And this head has clearly had an impact from that piston. The other combustion chambers look really nice, and this really isn't bad. It's not dented or majorly damaged, it's just you can tell that the carbon has been cleaned off by that impact. All right, let's knock these things through here. Not normal, maybe it is normal, I don't know. Oof, these do not look good. I'll show you these head bolts in a second. I know a lot of you are cringing right now, I'm also cringing. Just want to let you know, it's a shared response. We are living in this moment together where this idiot on YouTube is using a hammer on head bolts aimed at the mating surface, it's fine. I mean, I am using aluminum. I should probably use something else. So here are the head bolts and you can tell which ones came right out. These came right out. This one's rusty. And then the rest of these, they're like galled up here around the shank and the top part of the threads. That's why these didn't want to come out and that's why that cylinder head fought me so hard. So ridiculously hard for what it was. Now the same process on the right or passenger side cylinder head. You can totally tell which bolts are going to come out and which ones are going to be stuck. Well, it's, it's getting there. Let's see if that did anything. Well, that's not, that's not what I wanted. That's a perfect holder for that. Now this side doesn't look like it's going to have anything that's adjustable. And there are some vertical scratches, but nothing like the other side. This side looks all right. Ha, it was the only one like that. And maybe another one. This one is really stuck here. You know what? This is a problem for another day. Maybe later. Maybe later is that other day. Same issue as the other side. Apparently this side's worse. Five bolts won't come out so easily. All right, let's turn this thing over, get the fluid out of it, and we'll start taking the pans off. Every part of this engine has AMG stamped on it. 
The next thing we're gonna do is take the lower pan off. We'll get it. It's no sweat. Oh. Whew. I've seen some stuff before, but yeah, I've seen this before. Check out this pan. Look at those Look at bearing material there. And there's, ooh, what is that? What is this? Identify yourself. We'll figure that out in a minute. Oh, oh, oh. I did not expect that. There's a lot. It's like paste. Why do I keep doing this? I think that's metal. We're going to get, let's get a magnet. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable idea. Uh-oh. Well, that's not a good sign. How does it create so much of it? You know, we've seen a lot of, of spun bearings, a lot of disintegrated bearings, but this is a lot of material. It's like a bearing material factory, but not organized the way you want it. Now let's pull the pickup. Oh, there's more of it. So the question is, what is this? It's a rubber seal. So we found the other half in the pan. This was in the pickup. But this is really isn't enough to clog this. And I don't, I don't know where this seal came from. If you know where the seal came from, let me know. I don't know these engines well enough to tell you what that is. Now we're going to get the oil level sensor dismounted so we can have access to all of the bolts that hold the upper pan on. That is not what I wanted to happen, but it will work. Just gonna kind of kick that aside. And now I can get right on all these bolts, and my tools are gonna be covered in this stuff. Yay. Okay, start getting the bolts out for the upper pan. All right, in my head, I got all the bolts out. So this should just come right off. Like that. Now I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try to remove the bolt for the oil pump drive gear. Well, there goes a guide, but that did not work. All right. Now I don't know what to do. I think I just screwed myself here. You guys are probably all laughing at me. I'm laughing at me, so don't worry. Don't feel bad. You can laugh. I am too. You know what? We're going to pull the front timing cover. That's what we're going to do. I had to get the upper pan off to do that anyway, so now we'll pull the timing cover. That'll be fine. Let's get the crank pulley off first. All right. That one's not doing it. Let's get the big in. I think that's tight. I'm waiting for my compressor to turn on. <coughs> there we go. We'll let that fill up and see if I can get it with a blast. All right, let's give this a try. Come on. Woo! That's a tight bolt. You know what? I should be smart. We're just gonna 
thread this in a couple threads so, you know, I don't drop this on my foot. Okay. Just like that. Now I have about 75,000 T45s to take out, so we're gonna get started. It is that size. Aha! All right, I don't think there's any room for any more. Famous last words. Let's give it a little tap here. Well, it's moving. But it's like bouncing back. Ah, oh, here we go. Well, that was easy. Timing cover's in good shape. Now, I have to hand it to Mercedes. They really like these dual row timing chains, and so do I. Because they last a lot longer. The guides have a a lot of life left. Who knows how many miles are on this engine. We're just going to keep pulling parts off freely. What? Ah, that's a neat piece. Oh, there's a big old spring there. I should be careful. We know how springs are on this channel. There. Took the tension out of it. There we are. More oil. There's that timing chain. Last one of these I cut because I didn't really know how to get the pins out of the heads for those uh, idler gears or whatever those are called. This one did not have to cut. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to take this oil pump apart because that getting that bolt out of the drive gear is going to be required likely. Man, that can just come off. Another pretty cool piece. This is a pretty robust design. This bed plate has the windage tray built in. There's a lot of fasteners here and they're not all the same size. So we're going to start with the T45s and then we'll go to the T30s and then we'll get, I think those are E14s, 16s, some even number, I'm sure. Question is, did I get all the bolts out? Nope. There's a Torx down there. Missed one. Probably a T30. Oh, you know what? There was a bolt there, hiding in the murky oil. Oh, that's much easier when the bolts are out. Well, I can see some problems already. Several of them actually. That's a problem. The rest of these look okay. Uh, this crank's probably going to be pretty rough. Uh, let's start getting some rods and pistons out. That's all we got. We got eight rods and pistons and the crank. And we're done. All right, we're going to turn this over. We're going to start at the front. You always, always go front to back. Who goes back to front? It doesn't want to come out. All 
All right, now let's rotate this crank over to the problem pair. As you can see, the discoloration on the crank is really dark compared to the other journals. This has all been heat treated, and not in a good way. Um, okay, let's give it a little, little tap here. Nope, didn't like that. I had a feeling this was going to be fun. There we go. All right, so it seems like, yes, I can get the rod out. And that is part of the crank. So that, that's real cool. That doesn't come off, but the rod did, which hasn't happened before. Oof, well, there's no bearing there. You got to have bearings. Oh, it's still, oh, it's on the crank. All right, now we're going to take this last one off. This one's just going to kind of hang out here. It'll be fine. The real question is, can we get the other one out? Yeah. There's absolutely no bearing. Let's, let's give it a little, a little help here. Nice. Okay. Let's get the bolts out. Believe me, you. Old blue to the rescue. Whoa. That bearing is not very bearingy. Surprised it didn't spin. Wow. That's does this spin over nice? That yeah, part that crank spins over nice. Well, there's only one more thing to do. Oh, come on. Rear main seal. From front to back, you can see that the bearings get significantly worse. Coincidentally, that's further away from the oil pump. This is where it starts to get pretty bad. And you can see those bearings there. Those are really bad. Those are also really bad. And you can see the rods, look at all the heat in the rods. Obviously that one's egg shaped from hammering. They tried to keep this thing running. They ran it probably until it wouldn't run at all. As you can see, number eight piston, that's the cleaned area where it made contact with the cylinder head because of the lack of rod bearing it allowed that piston to travel further in the bore and smack the cylinder head. The rest of the pistons look okay, but these do have some wear, especially further away from the oil pump on the skirts. They're not, not great. They're not awful. And that one's pretty bad. Okay, maybe they are kind of awful. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. The main bearings look good, surprisingly. No signs of damage. A little bit there on the thrust bearing, but not bad at all. One thing to note about this crankshaft, look at the front of it and look at the back of it. I'm sure there's a reason behind this. And there's that torn up journal. You can see there's a pretty good height difference here. Nothing's plugged full of metal. This is a classical oil starvation situation. The bores are not great. We have several vertical scratches. And gouges. You can feel them with your fingernail. There's some good examples right there. See some of those gouges. It's going to need some machine work. And I don't even know if they make oversized pistons for this engine. It would be pretty unfortunate if they don't. This may come as a complete surprise to some of you. Well, not those of you that watch this channel. But the fastest way to kill an engine is to run it without oil or without enough oil. I mean, how many teardowns have we seen a catastrophic failure from oil starvation? Over half. At least over half. Which is really sad because it's mostly an avoidable situation. You just got to check your oil, spin your knob, pull the dipstick out. This engine even had a dipstick. 
Now, we are forgetting one scenario here that I'd like to mention. This engine was originally from a wrecked car. And in a lot of accidents, especially on European cars, there's oil coolers in the front and they get punctured. And a lot of times the engine doesn't shut off. So it could have been a situation where the engine evacuated all of its oil through a breached oil cooler or line and it starved itself. That kind of stuff happens. I've had engines that have sucked in coolant from the collision and bent rods. Wild scenarios do exist. Now, I'm really happy that this engine had a ton of parts on it. The M156 is a very special engine. I really do like this engine. It's not super complicated. Not like the M278. This engine is, in fact, much simpler. I know it's hard to say that. It's really hard to say that, but it is. It doesn't have turbos on it, and this engine has a ton of good parts. It's one of the most lucrative cores that I've had in the shop, and this one has a ton of good parts. Now, if you haven't seen the previous M156 teardown, that did not have as many good parts. That was a much worse failure, a common failure on those engines. So if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you watch it. Something I realized as I was scrolling through past teardowns is that none of my recent teardowns have been horrifically blown up. Nothing has chucked rods through pans. There's no holes in blocks, no disintegrated pistons. What am I doing? I know you guys are craving that carnage. You want to see destruction. So next week, we're going to take apart an engine that's really, really, really blown up. It's also really heavy, and it's based on a very old design. And you're just going to have to wait to see what it is. But if you'd like to buy parts off of this M156 or any of the other engines I've torn down, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. And as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.